You don't really know much about Halloween. Hello and welcome to another unboxing video. Uh, this time we are uh, dealing with a box that I've gotten from Vinegar Syndrome. And uh, I have opened this, but I have not taken anything out yet. So um, I do have it just to make sure everything was here before we started. Uh, this was a, a recent haul based on the release of a box set that I could not pass up. And whenever I order from there, because I don't want to have to pay for a ton of shipping, if there's other things I've been eyeballing or that are on sale or that I want, I will get them all at the same time and that way make it, uh, you know, one one and done. So uh, I'm going to go through these one at a time. I'm going to save the big bad boy for last, the thing that I'm most excited about. But um, <clears throat> first up is from 1984. It is Fatal Games, which is about a joveling throwing killer, uh, which according to Vinegar Syndrome is the most requested title that they've had as far as films that, that they wanted or people wanted to be released. It is a uh, oddball little slasher from the 80s, which uh, has a nice little slip case for those of you who are fans of the slip covers and uh, a lot of really nice special features. And um, I'm very curious about this one. I've, I've heard a lot about it, but I've never seen it. So this one is, most of these are blind buys, but that's how we're starting things out. Uh, follow that up with Graduation Day from 1981. Uh, this is another uh, slasher about a masked killer who murders students on the track team. So ties in nicely as a good double feature with Fatal Games. Uh, this stars Linnea Quigley and Vanna White. Yes, that Vanna White. Pick me a letter. Um, this one has been, I've been eyeballing for a while. This one is not a brand new release, but it's been one that's been on my radar. Uh, I'm a huge slasher fan, so this is one that uh, I've been wanting to check out. So I thought, why not get Fatal Games in that and just watch them back to back? So uh, Next up, we have the Cardona Collection, which if you are familiar with the Cardona dynasty, as it were, it, there's three generations of filmmakers, Rene Cardona uh, Sr., this is Rene Cardona Jr., and then Rene Cardona III are all filmmakers. And... Um, this is, he's kind of considered, uh, the Junior is considered the king of the Mex Mexican exploitation cinema of the 70s and 80s. Um, and this is uh, kind of like the Italian uh, films where they kind of took ideas from the American side of things and then they kind of remade them and vice versa. We took ideas from them as well. The, this is similar where they saw what was kind of popular over in the States and then they made their own little mockbuster version of it. Uh, this one includes a very notorious film, which is Beaks, which if you are not familiar with Beaks, right there on the cover. Um, but this is includes four of Rene Cardona Jr.'s films. I've got part one already on the shelf. Uh, includes Beaks, Under Siege, not the one with Steven Seagal, uh, La Casa Que Arde de Noche, did I say that right? That sounded more Italian than, than Spanish. And SOS Conspiracion Bikini, you know, because it's exploitation cinema. Um, Got to have some bikinis. But it's a, a collection of all four films. And the first box set was just a lot of fun. Like, it's a weird conglomerate, conglomeration of horror movies and... Um, uh, what's, a, what's a word I'm looking for? Like, disaster films. Just a very odd little collection of things and some good uh, special features and documentaries uh, with Rene Cardona the third talking about his father and his grandfather. So if you're not familiar, it's a good place to start part one and, and part two both. Uh, then we've got Day of the Panther and Strike of the Panther. You know, you got to have some good cheesy action films. Uh, these are both from 1988. They're both made this and released the same year or released the same year. I don't think they were made the same year. Uh, these were actually directed by Brian Trenchard Smith, who, if you're a fan of exploitation cinema, you probably already know uh, Turkey Shoot. It's probably his most famous film. 
Uh, he also is known for doing Leprechaun 3, which was the one that takes place in Las Vegas, and Leprechaun 4, yep, that one where he goes into space. Can't go wrong with a good space horror movie, right? Um, but anyway, I, I like the idea of, uh, you know, back-to-back -back double features, especially with, uh, I mean, the title alone makes me want to watch it. So I'm excited to check this out. I like a good, uh, especially old ninja movies. Uh, this one actually is not a Vinegar Syndrome. This is a partner label. This is an Umbrella release. Um, yes, like uh, Resident Evil. Had to look over at the shelf. Anyway, so yeah, I, I used to watch a lot of ninja movies when I was in high school. And so I, I've got a sweet spot for Kung Fu and karate and etc. So anyway, all right, next up we've got a, a little slice of exploitation. Uh, I don't know if it's good or bad, but uh, this is an AGFA, uh, American Genre Film Institute release. Uh, this is The Defilers and uh, A Smell of Honey, A Swallow of Brine. These are two exploitation movies from the 60s uh, from David F. Friedman. If you are not familiar with David F. Friedman, he was uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis's uh, producer or and Hirsch Gordon Lewis is a, a huge, like, I'm a huge fan of, of HG. Passed away a few years ago. His box set is kind of what started a lot of this for me as far as the, the collecting side of the, uh, uh, the boxes and whatnot. Because he's the man behind uh, Blood Feast, which is the original, the first gore film. I'm not a fan of gore necessarily, but it is kind of a, a, a benchmark in terms of horror film making. And David F. Friedman was his, his sidekick. And I've seen Friedman interviewed many, many times. And so, you know, when I found out that one of his most notorious films is being released, I can't say no. Plus, um, AGFA always puts out really strange stuff and includes some fun extra features. Usually they include multiple additional films along with it. So ones that maybe aren't as big. So you get a lot of bang for your buck when you buy one of their movies. But you really have to be into the... Bizarre cinema and or um, exploitation specific, which is not for everybody. Um, next up, we have Once Upon a Time in Uganda, which is a documentary all about Wakaliwood, which um, in this particular example, it uh, is about uh, Nabwana IGG, who is the man behind Big Black and um, uh, Who Killed Captain Alex, which if you are a fan of, of low budget filmmaking from across the globe, that guy, he makes these just way big action epics on a very minuscule budget. Um, and they're a lot of fun. I've got the Who Killed Captain Alex Big Black set. It's both films, and they are just over-the-top nuts. Um, but then there was a, a gentleman named Alan uh, Hoffmanis who went over and uh, to kind of check things out because he had seen videos on YouTube met uh Nibwana and they became friends they've been friends ever since and he's over there making movies with him uh, and this is a story all about you know it's kind of a documentary about all of that you can see alan right there and Nibwana up here um i there's some documentaries on the other uh film about him and Wakaliwood, hollywood which is not just him he's kind of the the best known um creator and it's just it's so fun uh, if you ever want to know why i love low budget films especially like shot on video stuff just watch one of his movies and you'll kind of understand um so i'm very excited for this i've heard about it but i've not seen it yet then we've got curse of the screaming dead from 1982 uh it's a regional zombie f film from uh, maryland this one um the story is is that they were requesting reshoots on another film that uh that they were doing and the guy got the money and he's like, oh, OK, I've got enough money. Why don't I just make another movie? So he basically kind of uh, retold, made a sequel sort of weird thing uh, to the movie he was working on. And this is the result of that. So it's regional filmmaking, which I'm currently neck deep in regional filmmaking uh, kind of studies. And it's a zombie film and it's got a fun little story. So couldn't pass up on that one. Uh, then we've got Ninjas in the Claws of the CIA. Uh, this, this is another John Liu film. Uh, John Liu, you may know if you are a fan of uh, Vinegar Syndrome, you'll know all about New York Ninja, which was a film that was lost. Uh, they found all the pieces of it, and a guy decided he was going to 
one of the guys at Vinegar Syndrome decided he was going to take all those pieces and he was going to put the film together. They didn't have enough to have the actual storyline. Um, they didn't have, they did it as best they could. And what they put out is just, it's phenomenal because it's basically pieces of a film that got lost. Sorry about that. I had to take a quick break because the dogs went nuts because somebody came to the door. Anyway, uh, John Liu, as I was saying, uh, there was the whole thing with New York Ninja. Just look it up. It's easier to me trying to explain it. It's a fascinating story. It's actually a really fun movie. The box set for it that I got is amazing. It was a blind buy. And so when I heard that there was more John Liu content out there, uh, I couldn't say no. So I've not seen this. I don't know much about it. I just know I really enjoyed his other film. It was bonkers, crazy fun. And um, so there you go. Finally, the whole reason I bought, made this giant purchase is the Lost Picture Show, Vinegar Syndrome's 10 film collection for their 10th anniversary. Basically, this is <laughs> 10 films that uh, defy all description. Um, it's a variety of films. Uh, it includes the Elijah Drenner, um, doc or Drenner's documentary, Against the Grain, which covers the history of uh, Vinegar Syndrome and what they do. So if you're not familiar with Vinegar Syndrome, it gives you a backstory of you know how they're preserving film. Uh, if you don't know what Vinegar Syndrome means, look it up. But uh, that has to do with preserving film. So this is a, a box set uh, that is kind of a celebration of everything um, that they've been doing for the past 10 years. And there's some movies in here that uh, are, you know, things that they thought were, you know, lost or that maybe, uh, who knows? It's just a, a, there's kids movies, there's uh, Beware of Black Widow, Deep Inside, Rare Blue Apes, Red Midnight, Violated. I feel like that's not the full title. Um, but it's it's just a beautiful box. There's uh, two different booklets in here. There's two different uh, two different uh, you know disc collections. Uh, this is Barbara Las Vegas Strangler, Last American Hobos, which is a documentary, uh, Voodoo Heartbeat, and What's Love, which uh, Las Vegas Strangler I've heard is. Um, one of the high points of it, as well as the Blue Apes, which is a kids movie that people thought was not real, like it didn't actually exist. Um, but then it's got a beautiful booklet. I'm trying to avoid some of this because uh, some of this includes some pictures that may not be suitable for YouTube. I don't want to get us taken down. Um, but this is what I've been most excited about because this is just going to be a weird journey through all kinds of stuff, plus the documentary I kind of want to show my lovely wife who is helping out with recording this um, so that uh, she can kind of see what I already know and some stuff that I don't know. So that is it. This was a, another big haul. I, when I go, I, I go hard because I don't do a lot of uh, purchases. I buy things here and there every once in a while, but um, I uh, kind of decided to, to dig deep. So if you like this, uh, please, you know, do all the things that you got to do to Tell me that you like the video, that you want to see more stuff, and I promise you there is more coming. Um, now that we've got this ball rolling, I think uh, that Laura is going to continue to kind of push me to do this sort of thing. I felt like this went better than the first one. Hopefully you all agree. And um, if there's other things you'd like me to talk about, uh, if you want me to talk about other films or other topics, anything else to do with film, um, whatever, uh, drop a line in the comment, shoot us an email at contact at thenewlydeads.com. And uh, I've got an entire shelf here, here, and here full of films. And um, so I'd be happy to talk about them at any time. So, all right. Until next time, we'll see you soon.